Hello and welcome into this week's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from R&N. On today's Cup Rewind, we're looking back at Sunday's 27th Annual Foxwoods Resort Casino 301. 301 laps are in the... 318.458 miles around the 1.058 mile New Hampshire Motor Speedway in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Lots of weird random numbers in this race. And it was a fairly weird random race for New Hampshire. Um, a lot more memorable than any recent New Hampshire race. Honestly, I can't think of the last New Hampshire race that I would rate as better than this one. This wasn't a great race, but it wasn't a bad race either. Uh, I definitely, I mean, I think we've come to expect such bad results out of New Hampshire races at this point that one that's mildly entertaining and that one that has a good finish is considered a really good race, so, which I guess is not a bad thing. And again, it wasn't a bad race, uh, between putting the traction compound down in two of the lanes, uh, in both one and two and three and four to kind of give us... Uh, a little more options for, for racing in the corners. We had more side-by-side -side racing than what we're used to at New Hampshire. Um, and I think that partially contributed to the good finish that we saw. Uh, so, you know, it, I think NASCAR might have stumbled into something here. Between the package that was used and the traction compound being down on the track in the corners, I think they stumbled into something here. Uh, nine caution flags in this race for a total of 48 laps. First one at lap 46 is the three of Austin Dillon spun and got into the wall in turn four. That was the only caution in stage one, which ended at lap 75 with Kyle Busch taking the stage one victory. Chalk another playoff point for that 18 car who already had the most and led the playoff grid. In stage two, we had three incidents causing cautions. Lap 111, the 8 of Daniel Hemrick and the 41 of Daniel Suarez got together in turn two, spun, and both of them found the wall. Suarez just kind of getting a little over aggressive uh, and washed up the track into Hemrick, and they both end up spinning into the wall. Lap 138, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse wrecks in turn two, and lap 146, the 19 of Martin Truex and the 14 of Clint Boyer got together off of turn four. Boyer just kind of washes up off of four and ends up turning himself into the wall um, off the nose of Truex, and this ends up kind of pancaking Truex into the wall at the same time. Stage two concluded lap 150 with Eric Almarola taking the stage to victory. Three caution flags in stage three as well. First one at lap 215 as the 18 of Kyle Busch spun uh, well, didn't really spin, just kind of washed up the track in turn two. Just barely got out of that third groove where they had the traction compound down, got into the loose stuff on the top of the track, and just really had no control over the car, just kind of washes up into the wall. Lap 220, the 42 of Kyle Larson gets spun in turn one by the 88 of Alex Bowman. And final caution of the day, lap 266, the 42 of Kyle Larson wrecks again, this time in turn two. 14 lead changes among seven drivers. Uh, Kyle Busch led the most laps, 118 laps led. Not far behind, though, was his teammate Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin definitely, I think, had the strongest car at the very end of this race. 41 laps went to Kevin Harvick, 12 laps apiece. were led by Brad Keselowski and Eric Almarola. Four laps were led by Eric Jones, and one lap went to Joey Logano. All right, Kyle Busch won the first stage, led the most laps. Eric Almarola led the second stage and led, or won the second stage and led 12 laps. And Denny Hamlin led a very high number of laps as well, almost the most laps led in this race. Did any of them pick up the victory in the New Hampshire race? No, they did not. Kevin Harvick picks up win number one for the 2019 season. Snaps a 21 race winless streak for that four car uh, dating back to Texas of last season, which um, that one 
technically got encumbered. He kept it, but, I mean, if it was this year, he wouldn't have kept it. But he did keep it last year. So 21 races back to the last win for the four car and finally able to park it back in victory lane. Uh, very exciting finish, though. He had uh, pulled away from Denny Hamlin on the final restart. Hamlin had reeled him back in. Hamlin definitely had the fastest car at the end of the race. Reels that four car back in. Puts the bumper to Harvick in turn one on the final lap. Was not quite able to get by him, though. They were um, side by side off a of two. Harvick clears him and then kind of crosses over and lets out the gas to make sure he's on the inside in turn three. And... Hamlin's alongside of him that way he kind of had control of it and Hamlin wasn't going to do the same thing in three uh, Harvick just trying to make sure uh, Hamlin couldn't put the bumper to him again and then Harvick kind of puts the bump well not really puts a bumper to Hamlin off of four but puts a fender to him just kind of washes up the track puts his right rear into Hamlin's left front off of four to kind of make sure he had uh, the momentum off of four, and Kevin Harvick gets it to the line first, picks up his first win of 2019, his 46th career Cup Series victory. Hamlin did come home in second with his teammate Eric Jones there in third, Ryan Blaney in fourth, and a very strong top five finish for Matt DiBenedetto. Very, very good run out of that 95 car. We've been seeing some really good results out of him lately. Um... I don't know if it's that team finally clicking. I don't know if it's the rumors of him uh, not being in that seat next year in favor of Christopher Bell. I don't know what it is, but we have been seeing a lot better results out of Matt DiBenedetto lately. So just something to, to keep in mind there as we get down through the rest of the season. Um, maybe just kind of fighting for his seat at this point. The rest of your top 10, Martin Truex, Ryan Newman came home in the seventh position. Uh, a lot better than I think a lot of us expected him to finish in this race. He had engine troubles in the middle of this race. How often do you see somebody with, with engine problems in the middle of a race come back for a top 10 finish? And he was running very competitive lap times at the end of the race. Like, had we had a few more laps, he might have finished top five in this race. Like, Ryan Newman... I don't know what has happened lately, but Ryan Newman all of a sudden is placing that six car much higher than I think a lot of us expect that six car to be anymore. So kudos to Ryan Newman on that. Kyle Busch came home in eighth, Joey Logano ninth, and Brad Keselowski rounds out the top ten to put all three Team Penske cars in the top ten. 11th through 20th, Eric Almarola in the 11th position. Uh, Alex Bowman down here at 14th. He had a crazy weekend. Uh, broke a drive shaft in qualifying in his primary car, then wrecks the backup car in practice on Saturday, so ends up having to take Jimmy Johnson's backup car, took all the, all the 48 stickers, all the Ally stickers off of that car, and put Exalta colors on it for the race today, and it actually was uh, the black from Jimmy Johnson's Ally scheme instead of the very dark blue that would normally be on the Exalta scheme because obviously they can't uh, repaint the entire color. They can just put the, the stickers on it. But, I mean, it, it looked relatively the same. Everybody made a big fuss about, oh, it's it's so much different. It's it's the Ally Black now instead of Exalta Blue. It, it really looked basically the same. Like, you had to really look hard to be able to tell there was even any difference to it at all. So, just just throwing that out there. Kurt Busch came home in 18th, not a very strong day for him, did not finish in the top 10 in Stage 1, and only mustered a 10th place finish in Stage 2, but he's locked in with that win last week in Kentucky now, so doesn't really have to worry about points at this point. Daniel Suarez, not a good day for him after that incident in the middle of the race. He came home in 19th, and Clint Boyer, after his wreck, also not a good day. He came home in 20th. 21st through 30th, Bubba Wallace down here in 22nd. Andy Sice making his Cup Series debut in 28th. Chase Elliott on and off pit road all day. Did not have a good day whatsoever. 29th for Chase Elliott. And uh, same thing for Jimmy Johnson. Not a good day for him either. 30th for Jimmy Johnson. 
Final page 31st through 37th, Austin Dillon after his incidents. He was able to come back out, but many laps down and ended up in the 32nd position. Kyle Larson, all of his accidents late. He landed in 33rd. Austin Terrio down here as well. He came home in the 35th position in the 52 for Rick Ware Racing. Ricky Stenhouse after his accident, 36th, and Daniel Hemrick only completed 110 laps before his accident, 37th, and shotgun on the field for the driver of the 8 car. So that's your results from the Foxwoods Resort Casino 301. So let's head over to the Media Center. We'll see what Kevin and his team had to say after their first win of 2019. Well, the lap cars were right in the middle of the groove. Um... With three laps to go, you know, there was four of them that were just, you know, just right where I wanted to be. So I had to do something, and I didn't want to lose momentum, and, and I was hoping that, you know, you could catch a break. And, and, you know, as soon as I got to him, the front of my car just didn't turn as well, and, and that's really where his uh, tire deficit, or our, our tire deficit showed, showed up um, in clean air. You know, we were, you know, where we needed to be and, and you know, ran faster than we had run all day. So... Um, you know, the, the, the thing that it comes down to is the call that Rodney made in, in putting us in control of the race. Uh, we got a good restart and, you know, just the lap cars uh, didn't, didn't play out for us. And, and some of the, the choices that I made allowed that gap to go away. And then it was defense from, from there. Yeah, you know, the guys that were leading the race, I was really surprised that they that they pitted. Um, you know, when we went green with 80 to go, we had already decided that if there's another caution, we're not going to pit unless we get shuffled back to eighth or ninth, and we can maybe put some tires on and drive back up through there. But um, when I told him to stay out, I honestly thought we would restart somewhere in the first two rows, and then everybody pulled in, and we were, we're sitting there, the leader, when, I, when he comes into sight, and I'm like, what in the world? But... Uh, <laughs> But anyway, you know, it, you just don't ever know when that's going to work out. Um, you know, I felt like we had a good car the whole race. And, um, you know, any time we could get clean air or, or far enough back from somebody, he was faster than anybody on the racetrack all day long. And then, you know, every time we would run somebody down and get within, you know, five, six car lengths of them, we would slow down two or three tenths a lap. So, um, you know, the, the clean air was, was huge today. And, uh, honestly, like he said, it was all about getting a, a good restart, uh, the 11 and the 20 kind of racing each other for a couple laps and getting out there. And, and um, it seemed like after four or five laps, the tires would kind of equal out. So um, he did a great job on the restart and, and got us where we need to be. I, yeah, from, from myself, it's, uh, I mean, obviously any win in this series is, is, is important. And, um, you know, it's so important to our guys back at the shop because we have sent them in every different direction that we could, and um, they just keep working and doing what we need them to do. So, um, you know, this win is, uh, I think, I think it's been a humbling year for all of us. I, mean, I think it's been a frustrating year, um, obviously, after the, the, the Cinderella year that we had last year, and our stuff fired off really good at the beginning of the year, and, and we honestly, we didn't anticipate anything less than that this year. Um, but you know, in, in, in sports, that's not always the case. So, I'm, I'm proud of everybody. I'm proud of Rodney and, and, and uh, Kevin and, and our other drivers and crew chiefs for for just pushing and voicing their opinions and, and, and allowing us to, uh, to to make things better. But I will sit here and say for everybody, I, we had we had good cars today, and I think we had better speed. But I don't think anybody should think that we're where we need to be. We we and that's the exciting part to me is we did win today because we put. You know, Rodney made a great call for Kevin in, in, in position, but I still think we can go home in our, our meeting on Tuesday and we can still make our cars better, and, and uh, we will make them better and, and, and be ready for the end of the year. All right, so let's take a look at your playoff grid before wrapping up here tonight. And uh, not a lot of changes position-wise. Obviously, Kevin Harvick now into the winner's side of the column. Now he is obviously locked into the playoffs. Now with that win... And we now have nine drivers locked into the playoffs with wins. And then another seven spots open for drivers trying to get in on points at the moment. Uh, really, again, still the battle happening down toward the cutoff line. Eric Jones and Ryan Newman both up two spots this week. Newman back into a playoff spot there in 15th. And Clint Boyer drops two down to 16th. Jimmy Johnson back out of the playoffs now, down two spots to 17th after his 30th place finish. He now sits tied with Daniel Suarez there in the 17th position, 17 points out behind 16th place Clint Boyer. So 
while it's still very tight here from about 14th to 18th, and really Kyle Larson not too far up the road there, 30 points in front of Eric Jones, it's very tight down here, but 17 points is a fairly sizable gap between Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson. Unless Boyer wrecks and is out early uh, this next week at Pocono, I don't think that's a number Jimmy Johnson can make up in one week. That's a number he's going to just have to start chipping away at. And same with Daniel Suarez. Unless they can win a race, which Suarez has been inconsistent, but we have seen him up front in different races. It is possible Daniel Suarez could sneak in a win and throw a wrench into all of this. Same thing for Jimmy Johnson. We've seen him up front more lately than we did in the beginning of the season. So um, it is possible. I mean, it is Jimmy Johnson we're talking about. It's not like we're talking about some rookie that's never won a race and we're like, oh, they have the potential to win, but can they win? I mean, we're talking about the seven-time champion here. We know he can win races. He's won a bunch of them. Um, it's just, can he put a race together? He hasn't put uh, a points race together since 2017. So, it's... It, who knows? That's the thing here. There's so many question marks here. Um, do I see Jimmy Johnson or Daniel Suarez winning a race before the playoffs? No. But, can they do it? Yes. Um... Jimmy Johnson, up to this point, is the only driver to have made the playoffs every year since it was formed in 2004, back when it was called the Chase. That's in jeopardy of being broken this year. We could finally have that streak broken and have no drivers that have been in, in the playoffs every year, which is obviously going to happen at some point, because Jimmy Johnson has to retire at some point. So if it doesn't happen before he retires, it'll happen then, but this might be the year where that streak breaks. Um, we're getting closer and closer to the playoffs, and Jimmy Johnson, again, is currently outside the playoffs. So this, there's a lot to watch here as we get down toward the playoffs here. We're, we're very close here. We've got six races left until the playoffs. Just six more opportunities for guys to make their way into the playoffs. And, and again, with seven open spots for points... That means one win gets you into the playoffs. We could have six different winners that haven't won races yet for the remainder of the regular season, and they're all locked into the playoffs. And we still get one driver in on points that way. So it's it's going to be very interesting going forward here. These next six races are going to be crazy. Just tr seeing who gets into the playoffs and who doesn't. This is one of the, um, I think this is one of the more exciting battles to, to get into the playoffs that we have had in recent years. This is, I think this is going to get good over the next six races. This is going to be fun to watch. But that is your playoff grid following the Foxwoods Resort Casino 301 from New Hampshire, and I believe that'll do it for us on this Cup Series Rewind. Uh, we had an ARCA Rewind go up yesterday morning, Saturday morning, for their race Friday night from Iowa. We had an Xfinity Rewind go up for New Hampshire, as well as a Canaan East Rewind for New Hampshire. Winter interviews for both the ARCA race and the k &N race are up as well. So go check those out. Great talks with Chandler Smith and with Chase Cabry. And uh, that should be about it for this weekend. Working on a Christopher Bell interview for Xfinity may happen, may not. But we're trying nonetheless. Um, and then, uh, what, Diecast Review coming up on Wednesday. This week it will be, uh, what is this week? Oh, Joey Logano Martinsville wins. So that'll be a fun one to look at. A uh, really cool looking car. I mean, if you, 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 how can you forget the the battle between Logano and Truex at Martinsville in the playoffs last year? That's that diecast. It looks fantastic, um, and that's coming up on Wednesday on Diecast Review. So hope you'll tune in for that to check that out. And then Pocono coming up this weekend as well as Iowa, uh, Arca Trucks and Cup are in Pocono this next weekend. And then Xfinity and the Canon Crossover Racer in Iowa. So we've got a lot to talk about coming up next weekend. That's going to be a fun weekend coming up for you with lots of rewind shows and hopefully a lot of interviews for you as well. So uh, going to be a fun one. But if you haven't done it already, you need to go down below. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of that coming up here on RNN. While you're down there, why don't you hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. 
But at that, this has been the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.